Welcome to another Science of Sport field trip. My name is Darren Heaton with the Science of Sport, and we are excited to have two incredible guests joining us today. Patrick Belling, who is the Senior Cognitive Scientist, and Jorge Gonzalez, the Director of Operations for Sports Academy. Uh, again, our goal for today is to be able to expose you all to some cool opportunities within STEM and sports. And today's we're going to be doing exactly that with Sports Academy. And uh, not only are we going to get to hear a little bit more about them, uh, we're going to get a tour of their amazing facility in Frisco and learn more about their Move app. And uh, the Move app is really focused around helping increase cognitive functions uh, and which can help you within your reaction time uh, to, to help improve your uh, athletic uh, ability within sports. And so uh, we have a, a fun competition that they'll be going through. And so I would like to welcome in Patrick and Jorge. Thank you for, for joining us today. Hi, thanks. Thanks for, ha thanks for having us, Darren. Yeah, so tell us a little bit more about you guys yourselves, a little background to start with. Sure, Jorge, you wanna go first? Yeah. Um, so my name's Jorge, and I'm one of the directors here at the uh, Sports Academy uh, Venture Lab. So pretty much my what I support the team with is really a lot of on the project side. Um, a lot of the uh, resources that we have to allocate towards the different projects that we do, um, as well as support some of these great events that we put on. Um, so I'm really excited to be here. Um, and Patrick, kind of my my co counterpart, will uh, talk a little bit about himself and a little bit about what we're going to be doing today. Yeah, thank you, Jorge. Yeah, so my background is in cognitive science. Uh, so I spent a lot of time in uh, grad school studying um, how can we affect decision making and performance in sport. Uh, what are the ways that we can help athletes to anticipate outcomes faster and more accurately and uh, determine what their teammates are going to do uh, and, and ultimately improve their performance on the field or the court or the rink. Um, so I'll, I'll be taking you through some of some of how Sports Academy uh, brings that all to life today. Awesome. Well, uh, I just want to mention everyone that is either joining on Facebook or YouTube uh, that are participating in all of our camps, use that chat and uh, we'll be answering some of those questions either throughout uh, Patrick and Jorge's presentation or we'll be saving them for the end. Uh, so so with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to you guys. All right, thanks, Darren. All right, so um, thanks for having us again. Uh, excited to be here, excited to show you all what we do. Um, Jorge and I are with the Sports Academy Venture Lab, so it's a very kind of specific part of Sports Academy uh, that, that focuses in on cognition. Um, and what I want to have everyone do first is just to download SA Move. Um, if you have a, a second device that you can do that on, uh, the instructions to do that are, are on the screen right now. So we'll, we'll go through this um, later in the presentation, um, but if you just want to trigger the download now, um, just to get that going in the background while, while we do some talking here. Um, this application is going to be available to you uh, all week, and it's going to give you some cognitive exercises that you can do each day um, as a warm up. Um, and, uh, w but again, I'll, I'll walk you through how that works later in the presentation. And, and if you have any questions or, or um, you know, you're having trouble with uh, getting that downloaded, just go ahead and, and post that in the chat as well. Um, so a little bit of an introduction to Sports Academy more broadly. Um, we have a couple different facilities uh, out of which we train athletes um, up and down the spectrum from, from very young athletes all the way up to NFL, NBA, MLB, WNBA players. Uh, we have state-of-the-art physical training, sports medicine, and recovery services that we offer. So just always uh, giving athletes 
everything they, they need to, to perform at their absolute best. Um, and I want to just, before we go into really specifically what the Venture Lab does, I wanted to give Jorge a chance to just kind of show off our facility a little bit. Thanks, Patrick. So uh, as I mentioned, my name is Jorge. I'm one of the directors here at Sports Academy Venture Lab. And I have the privilege of actually being on site every day and working here at the Academy. So um, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of a tour here just to kind of show you the incredible facility. Um, what we have here is kind of our weight room. So this is where all of our athletes uh, come in to train. Uh, we also incorporate the space to for rehabilitation. So any injured athletes can also use the space as well uh, to help them with any kind of corrective uh, exercises. Um, we also have kind of our, our hallway here that leads to our, uh, our integrated sports medicine area. And then we also have kind of a, um, a recovery suite down at the end. And then here we have kind of our massive turf. So you can see some kids already down there. We got some soccer camps going on. We've got a big screen TV there at the top, if you can see that. And that's where we, we use that TV to launch a lot of our competitions, to show some leaderboards, and to also show some of the cool Instagram and Facebook stories that we do. Um, as I'm walking on the turf, I'll show you guys kind of our venture, our cognition lab. So we specifically created this cog lab down on the turf so that athletes can go from training and quickly move into our cog lab, which they can then do their cognitive exercises. So here's the cog lab. We've got 13 state-of-the-art upgraded iPads, um, all kind of on this adjustable stand. So we can train people from, you know, kind of the littles all the way to kind of the, the tall NBA athletes. Um, so um, I'm going to be down here kicking off the competition later today. So in the meantime, I'll pass it over to Patrick and Patrick can run you guys through the rest of the deck. And then um, I'll see you guys here in a bit. All right. Thanks, Jorge. All right. So um, I wanted to give everyone a little bit of a chance to um, show, show off uh, what your understanding on this type of uh, topic might already be. So if, if you want to try to type any answers into the chat right now, um, I will, uh, I'll, I'll look at those and see if, if any of those match. But uh, does, does anyone know the, the, the phrases perception and cognition? Is anyone familiar with those? Does anyone know what those mean? Anyone see that in the chat? Looks like maybe no. <laughs> so perception, uh, perception and cognition, uh, basically perception, the ability to see, hear, or become aware of something through the senses, right? So anytime you detect something, whether, whether it's hearing or smelling or seeing, uh, when you detect that consciously, that's the process of perception, all right? Cognition the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience, and the senses, right? So we use perception and cognition in sports all the time. Uh, we, we, don't, we don't even really uh, know that we're doing it, but we are, we are always perceiving things around us and thinking about them, right? So we perceive the teammates around us, uh, we perceive the opponents, we perceive the ball, um, and we use cognition all the time, right? So every time that you're making a snapshot judgment about where the ball's going to be next, where that person's gonna go, where your teammate's gonna to move to, you're using cognition in sports. Um, and a couple, a couple of the specific categories of, of cognition that we train in the Sports Academy Venture Lab are, are on this little wheel here. So focus and concentration, high-speed decision-making, emotional regulation and relaxation, pattern recognition and spatial reasoning, visualization and imagination, and reaction and anticipation. Um, so those, th those are, are some of the different things we train, but we, we do a lot um, on this topic. So um, it, it, you might be kind of thinking, well, how? how? How do we train perception and cognition? 
Well, so the, the best way uh, and the way that we sort of automatically do this is by practicing, right? So when we, when we go out and we play the sport that, that um, you know, we enjoy, we are, we're automatically getting better at it, right? And that's not just physically, right? It's not just that your body is getting stronger. It's that you're able to um, know the game better. You're able to read the game better. You're, you're able to kind of think on your feet and react to things really quickly. And all of that is cognition and it's helping you perform. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, there's, and there's a, quite a bit of science on this that shows that it's, it's really it's repetitions that make us better at this, right? So an NFL quarterback has been through the repetitions of reading a defense so many more times than, you know, a young athlete who's just starting to play quarterback. And that's the biggest thing that makes them so good is that they've been through it so many times. And that's why everyone says practice makes perfect. Well, what we do in, in, in the Sports Academy Venture Lab is we help athletes get those repetitions without even needing to be on the field. So I can take out my phone and I can get repetitions on the things that matter the most to me on the go using my smartphone or a tablet. So, so these are some screenshots here from, from a, a separate application, which, which I'll, I'll put in the chat uh, later as well. Uh, an application called SA Rise that's in the App Store. And what, the, what this application does is it focuses really specifically within each sport to, to provide some drills to train on. So, so the example on the screen here would be for baseball players training on pitch recognition. So they can kind of go into the app, they can say, I wanna train on this person, it's a, a three quarters release right-hander, and I wanna train on recognizing the pitch types. And what they see on the screen is just what the exactly what the batter would see in a baseball game. And as soon as the pitcher releases the ball, the screen cuts to black. You can't see anything. And it asks you to push a button to indicate which pitch type you thought that was going to be. So you're practicing this ability to anticipate what the pitch is going to be before you get to kind of see it come all the way to you. And there's a lot of really cool evidence that training on this makes baseball hitters hit better. So if you're a baseball player, a football player, a volleyball player, or a fast pitch softball player, all four of those sports are in SA Rise right now. Um, we're going we're gonna to talk about SA Move in a little bit. Just a little plug there for SA Rise as well. That's in the App Store uh, for, for iOS. Uh, <laughs> We'll skip the vote. All right, so um, how, how do we know that this type of training works? Does anyone want to guess in the, um, in the, in the chat window uh, how, how you might go about figuring out if this works or not? Any guesses? Evidence of it working. That is exactly right. <laughs> so the, the same way we study anything else in the world, right? The, the scientific method. Um, so we, we always start with a question. Uh, we review we review literature out there that, that other people have published about that question to try to kind of see what's already been done, what's already been studied. We form a hypothesis, right? A testable question that we can use to kind of get very objective uh, measurement of, of whether or not this thing works the way we think it does. We design an experiment to test that hypothesis. We do some math and we look at, did it actually change things? And then we, we uh, work on a conclusion that helps to integrate our results into that broader field of science. And so one thing that I did um, prior to working at, with Sports Academy was working with the U.S. Soccer Federation. And what they wanted to know is how do we, how do we know uh, if players uh, are, can, if any of this, this stuff matters when it's, when it's made digital, right? Like, can you really get better at this stuff off the field or do you need to be on the field? And so what I would do is um, I designed some, some programs and th this is actually a sports academy program. This is much better than what I did in graduate school, but 
Um, what I would look at is taking college level division one soccer players and also taking recreational level, same age, but playing more rec recreational level or, or in high school. And I would have them do a test like what you're seeing on the screen. And what you're seeing is each time there's a, a decision coming up, I would pause it and you get the ability to quickly tap on the screen where you think it's gonna go. So you're, you kind of see some options pop up and you just tap right on the screen. Uh, I think that this person's gonna pass it back to this guy. And by doing this, the application can measure if you're accurate, right? Did you press the right button? And it can measure if you are fast or slow, right? So all the while, while you're engaging in this tool, it's measuring uh, your, your, your speed and your accuracy. And what I did is I looked very closely at the speed and the accuracy between these different skill groups. And what we found is that better players were better at this, right? So, so this digital representation of, of decision-making in soccer is, is valid uh, for, for that reason. Um, and, and beyond that, there's, there's a lot of cool studies looking at training and does practicing on this make you better on the field? Uh, so there's a lot of really cool studies in this field. Um, but this was one of the first times that someone kind of made a digital tool to try and look at that. And that, that's something I worked on in, in graduate school. Um, we have at Sports Academy um, grown this concept and, and to, the, to the point that we are the leaders in this, in cognitive science and sports, right? So we work with NFL teams, with NBA teams, MLB, collegiate softball, volleyball, collegiate football, baseball. We've worked with the U.S. men's soccer team, international rugby teams. Uh, we've worked with endurance athletes, esports athletes, Formula One drivers, um, training cognitive skills. So just some examples of what that looks like on the screen here. Well, if you're doing training as, as an NFL player, you're, if you're in the quarterback position, one of the really useful skills for you to learn is coverage recognition, right? Is being able to, when the ball is snapped, to look up at the defense and to, and to think to yourself, okay, that, I think that's a cover two. So, you know, the safeties are gonna be over here and maybe the opening is gonna be, uh, you know, in the middle of the field. So that, that's exactly something that we train on is coverage recognition. And you can kind of see what that looks like on the left where it says NFL. You kind of have some options on the screen. You watch video, just like in the previous example. At, right at the moment when you need to know the answer by, the screen shuts off. You see the options, and, and you you know, and you, you you practice that. You start off; it maybe feels like you're guessing a little bit, but the more repetitions you get in, the less you're guessing, and the more you actually know what's going to happen next. Uh, in the NBA, we've had partnerships where we. Um, build our decision-making training into the process for them to watch their game film. So they're practicing making their decisions in, instead of just kind of watching it like we all do as fans of the NBA, they're actually interacting with the screen and they're practicing making their decisions. Uh, they get to see really specifically when was a wrong decision made, what should that person have done, uh, and, and they're able to train on that so frequently that it becomes automatic. So when they're in the game, they're not, they're not thinking about it a lot. It's become an intuitive, automatic response. Um, this, these, these screenshots on this screen are from, are from the SA Move app. So this is what we're going to do today. All right. So we also train cognition outside of sport. And I don't mean that athletes don't do this because athletes do do this, but this extends beyond sports, right? So reaction time training, hand-eye coordination, information processing, inhibition, working memory capacity. These are all things that we train for athletes, but we also train uh, with law enforcement and military and emergency medicine uh, and surgeons. So this, this is about uh, sharpening your cognitive abilities uh, through practice. And this is what we're gonna, we're gonna work on today. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to explain uh, ex exactly the three tasks that, you, that you're all about to do in the SA Move app, uh, if you've got it downloaded. So there's going to be three tasks in a row when you log in. Um, the first task 
is going to be a reaction time task. And you can kind of see the picture on the screen right here. There's going to be a large button in the middle of the screen and it's going to light up either green or red. When it's green, you tap it as fast as you can and the application is going to measure how fast you're tapping it in fractions of a second really fast, but it's going to measure that. When it turns red, don't hit it because the system's going to flag that as an error and it's going to make your score worse. All right, so you only want to hit it when it's green. The second task that we're going to do is a hand eye coordination task, a dexterity task. Um, you're going to see a smaller button appear on the screen and instead of being in the same place in the middle of the screen, it's going to move. It's going to move all over the screen and your job is wherever it goes to quickly hit it. Just touch, just tapping the screen. Just like before, sometimes it's going to be green. Sometimes it's going to be red. You only want to hit it when it lights up green. Okay. The, th the third task we're going to do. And this one's, this one's the toughest, um, is, is the processing task, the information processing task. So you're going to see an arrow on the screen and you're going to see eight buttons around that arrow. When the arrow, the arrow is going to rotate and it's going to point at different buttons. When it lights up green, you want to push the button that it's pointing at. So that one that just got circled, right? When it lights up green, you push where it's pointing at. When it lights up orange, you don't push where it's pointing at, you push the opposite of that and you go behind the arrow when it's orange. So it's gonna be rotating and changing colors and you have to process all of this as quickly as you can and as accurately as you can and push the right button. Um, so uh, if, if we all have the app downloaded, uh, I, can, I can kind of put some of this information back on. So, so what you wanna do is go ahead and you want to log in with your Science of Sport email. And it's going to prompt you right in the app. It's going to say, go ahead, go ahead and type a password in. And you can go ahead and type your password in. And just something that you'll remember uh, is, what, is what you want to do there. And then it's going to ask you a few questions about when you want to be reminded about your workouts and things. You can, you can skip all of that, come back to it later if you want. And you want to get to this screen where it says do today's class. And, and if, uh, if anyone's having trouble with that, go ahead and go ahead and post in the chat. Then once you get to this screen, if you think you understand those tasks, right, and uh, reaction time, dexterity, and processing, you can go ahead and press do today's class. And this is just a practice, okay? So this isn't the competition um, quite yet. We're going to do that after. So this is your chance to just run through the tasks. And if you don't understand anything, there's a pause button that you can hit, and you can pause it in the upper right and you can type into the chat with any questions you might have. All right, so is, is anyone um, having any trouble with that? Or are people quietly running the application just fine? I'm not seeing any comments that people are having trouble. So what I'll do here is I'll, I'll uh, try to share my screen here a bit more. All right, so you should arrive on this screen right here that says do today's class. 
you go ahead and press it and you start. So what I'm doing is I'm tapping the green button as quickly as I can. And that little number that pops up is the fraction of a second that it's measuring how fast I can go. And I would, I would be better at this if I wasn't talking at the same time, I promise. So you all should be seeing this same task. Each of them go for just one minute. Oof, making a lot of mistakes here. Um, Jorge, it looks like somebody in the chat's having a little bit of trouble. Maybe you can answer that one in the chat. Oof. All right, when you finish the reaction task, it's gonna take a little break. As soon as you're ready, you can press keep moving to do the dexterity task. Oof. So just like before, you wanna hit it when it's green not when it's red, but it's gonna move around on you. And what you'll see is that your time to react will go up a little bit because it's a little bit harder when you have to use a bit more hand-eye coordination and movement. If you're having um, if you're having problems with the um, the age, uh, let's let's figure that out at the end. Um, just just try your best to pay attention to the tasks on the screen, so that when we compete on them in just a minute, you'll be able to. All right, and then the third task you're going to see is this processing task. So you'll keep moving again. When it's orange, you go behind it. When it's green, you go in front of it. So it's gonna rotate green, orange behind, green in front, green in front, orange behind. We're gonna do a version of these tasks in, in just a little bit in the, um, in, in, a, in a, a web version of the application for, for doing really big competitions. So you'll be able to do it in there. So just do your best to pay attention on this. Almost done. Hopefully you're kind of seeing where the text pops up. That's the button that I'm hitting. And you're starting to see the pattern. <laughs> Green going in front of the arrow, orange going behind the arrow. All right, and when you're done, it, this screen will pop up. Uh, you can rate how difficult you felt that was. And so I could say something like comfortable, finish class, and then you'll be done. But the, the next day, uh, it, you'll have the same opportunity, opportunity to do those same three tasks again uh, through Thursday. All right, so, Let's let's give this a shot. Let's try and get a competition going. Uh, we'll we'll do this through a different mechanism too, so everyone should be able to get in. Um, yeah, I, I see that comment that just came in. Um, valid account, but credentials are not accepted on this platform. Uh, we can definitely um, sort out some of those uh, towards the end here for for SA Move. Um, we're going to get off of SA Move though for this competition, right? So all you need to do now is um, on your on your device that's touch screen, or you can even do this um, uh, on your computer. Uh, you, you're going to go to just in your web URL. Go ahead and, and go to that link, and it's probably best if you do it on your on your touch screen device. That's going to be the the most uh, the most fun. So if you go ahead and hit that link and you enter the clearance code 0311, 
and Jorge is going to host a few tasks for us. All right, so you're going to see this is a version of the application that we used with the special forces, which is pretty cool. And when you click on that link, you should see this page pop up. What you want to do is you want to hit join the competition on your screen. I'm going to hit show the leaderboard, but you want to hit join the competition. Jorge, do you have a code for us? Yes, I do. The code is 7726. And just to be clear, if it's asking you for the clearance code, the clearance code is 0311. That's how you get to this screen with the clearance code 0311. Then when you click to join the competition, the second code you enter is one more time, Jorge. Seven, seven, two, six, seven, seven, two, six. All right. So what, what my screen is going to show here is the leaderboard as people join. So then just, um, and remember there's two codes here, 0311, the clearance code to get in. Then you press join the competition and then 7726. Go ahead and tap that big circle. Just, just tap on that. And it should, let you pass that and ask for a clearance code. Okay, looks like we've got, yep, no problem. Looks like we've got six people in so far. It's gotta be more than that. Don't be shy. The first code is 0311. That's the clearance code, 0311. The second code is 77. Well, you press, you press the join the competition button. And then the second code is 7726. 7726. Hey, while we have uh, some time so that some additional kids can join in, I think it'd be cool to hear a little bit about the both of your background, um, you know, like how you got into uh, doing what you do today and, you know, wh where did you guys go to school at? Great question. Jorge, you want to go first? Uh, yeah. Um, so my background is really military. So I'm a... Uh, I'm a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. Um, out of high school, I decided to join the Marines to serve my country. So I spent, I had an eight year contract with the Marines, did a lot of really cool things, learned a lot, uh, especially around character development, leadership skills, um, and obviously all the tactical um, elements that we were taught in the Marines. Um, I was able to use all of that training really through my business career. Um, leading an organization at one point of about 250 employees over in uh, Wichita, Kansas. And then after Wichita, Kansas, I got a call from Chad Faulkner, who is the owner and CEO of Sports Academy. Um, I've known him for about 20 years now. Anyways, he called me and said, hey, I got this idea to build this world-class 
sports training facility that has everything in one place so that you know young athletes don't have to go to the park for practice then go somewhere else to get any kind of physical therapy and then go to somebody's house for any type of tutoring so uh, we built sports academy together uh, along with three or four other partners then i had the opportunity to join the sports academy venture lab as an operations director and really kind of utilizing my tactical skills to support all of the different projects that we have going on. So that's a little bit about me. Um, and then Patrick. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jorge is, is our military guy. He's, he's our, our leader and he keeps all of us efficient. He does a lot of project management. He, he, he really is the director of operations. It's uh, it's not just a title. It's what he does and he's good at it. Um, my, my background is, is very different from that. Um, so I, uh, I grew up in Wisconsin. I went to the University of Wisconsin and um, I did my undergrad. I got a, a Bachelor of Science in Psychology. Um, I, I considered a lot of different options at that point, um, but I knew I wanted to go to graduate school. Um, and uh, I, I applied to a, a lot of different programs, a lot of different types of programs. and. One in particular that kind of stuck out for me was um, at Michigan Technological University, which is in the um, in the upper peninsula of Michigan, the UP, way up there, pretty much Canada. Um, and, and the program was Applied Cognitive Science and Human Factors. And so I got my master's degree in that program. Um, the focus being how do we take uh, the things that we know about psychology uh, and, co and specifically cognitive psychology and kind of apply them into the world, whether it's designing the interface for a car or a computer so that people can use it better, so that people are attending and looking at the right things. Um, but my research was really specifically focused on decision-making in sport uh, as part of that the grant through the U.S. Soccer Federation that I referenced earlier. Uh, so. One of the one of the faculty members at that at that university had just gotten this grant, and uh, as part of my application, I mentioned that I was a soccer player growing up, that uh, that I played for many years, and um, he, so he, he reached out to me about about being a research assistant uh, on that grant, which helped me pay for things and um, allowed me to do all that really cool work for U.S. Soccer. And at what age did were you like? Oh, this is this is something that really interests me, and I'm going to pursue it. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. I I, I certainly wasn't. Um, you know, some people from a very young age know exactly what they want to do, and that's not me. Uh, that that's 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 not my experience. I kind of uh, I was very interested in a lot of things, and it was hard for me to, you know, close those doors. Um, but then uh, as part of these different applications, I, I, I got really interested in human factors and, and in cognitive science, and it felt very applied to me. So it was, it was kind of a cool, new, innovative thing that I could do uh, with, with a psychology background, um, and that attracted me to it. And then once I found out about this, this grant through US soccer to, to study decision-making uh, scientifically, uh, that, that, that really pushed it over the top for me. And I, I kind of haven't, I haven't really looked back since. Uh, so that would have been, um, you know, I, I went straight to graduate school out of undergrad at, um, I would have been 21 at that time. And then uh, in 2013, I would have been like 24 or something. I, uh, I, I reached out to this, this company at the time, which was Axon Sports uh, in, located in Arizona. And, we started collaborating on some of the science of this. Um, I was looking to study it. They were building these really cool products and, and commercializing it. Sports Academy acquired Axon Sports. Um, and so uh, every, everything that I've kind of worked on there is all, it's all the same here. It's, it's, um, but it's great. It's, it's been a, a really, really good choice uh, for me. And uh, in addition to Jorge and I, we have really incredibly talented programmers on, on the development side. 
that make all of this possible, right? So we have to, we want our products to be based on science and we want to build them out so that they're leveraging all the things that we know will help athletes the most. And that's the part of the company that I really focus on. But in order to pull that off, we have to have a lot of skill on the development side, being able to kind of make different situations, um, you know, feel authentic, to be able to measure really precisely response time to um, drills like the ones we're about to do. Um, so we're really fortunate to also work with a great dev team. Thanks. That's excellent background and, you know, really want every one of uh, the viewers to, to understand that there are plenty of different avenues that are possible within sports and especially STEM here that aren't related to actually playing the, the sport as well. Uh, we can certainly use a lot of these tools uh, to help us on the field, but there are avenues that are on the development side uh, that uh, are available too. So I I'm excited to see this game and uh, it looked like we got a couple more competitors that were able to join. So um, let's, let's see what we got. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go for it. looks like we've got 11. You want to uh, start it up for him? Yeah. If you guys are ready, I'm ready over here in the cog lab. All right. Uh, Patrick, what do you think about running them through kind of a 30 second warm up for this competition? Sure. Just to get everybody warmed up and kind of used to the application. And then what we'll do is we'll do a full minute, full competition. The winner of this task will receive a Sports Academy shirt along with a really cool Sports Academy hat. We'll get it all packaged up, we'll send it over to you. And um, we'll do this on two parts. So we'll run through a simple task and then we'll do another task. And so we'll have two winners, two prizes to give away. I'm excited. So whenever you, so whenever Patrick, you're ready, I'm ready to kick it off here. All right. Yep. And you yep. ready? So let's, let's, yeah, we're ready. So 30 seconds, and we're just going to do the reaction time task, everybody. So there's going to be a big green button. As soon as it goes green, you hit it. If it's red, you don't hit it. 30 seconds just to warm up. And then we're going to do it again for a minute. It's going to be the winner of the one-minute session that gets, that gets the prize. All right, I think we're ready, Jorge. All right, we ready? Thumbs up. All right, here we go. So on your screen, you should see starting in and it's counting down. All right, now you see warm up. So it's letting you kind of warm up. You want to hit that as soon as it's green. And if you don't hit it quickly enough, it's going to go away. So you've got to be fast but don't hit it when it's red because that's going to hurt your score. All right, All right. How are we doing? We're doing we're doing well. So um, it, it should say on your screen uh, what what place. So I don't, it it just it's going to be filling uh, filling in your name with just a kind of anonymous code. You don't have to change that. You don't have to put your name up, um, but you do have to tell us who you are if you want the prize on this next one. <laughs> you can also. Uh, you can, you can change that uh, if you want to add your name by hitting done. And then you can hit the little sort of, there's like a little pencil icon. That's, that's what you can do to, oops, sorry. You, you wanna just hit right where it says tap to change your name underneath that little code. And you can put your name in if you want before we run the next one.
Okay, so um, we'll do another, a new code. Um, yes, sir. And this, this will be for one minute. The same thing we just did, it's just gonna last an entire minute now. And the winner's gonna get a prize, two prizes. All right, if everybody's ready, the new game code is 8881. So you want to hit join the competition again, and then 8881. Ah, uh, there we go. I see some names now. Oops. Oops. I really love this deploying screen. Yeah, I like that too. I absolutely love it. All right, looks like we got 10. 11, there we go. 11 now, all right. Is that everybody? That's everyone from the last run, unless there are some new people joining. All right. Let me Oops. tweak a couple well, of things well, here on my end. Oh, we got somebody new. All right. Let me make some adjustments here on my end. We are going for a full minute on simple. Let me make sure the chat. All right. If we got Winter asking about how do we change the name? So, so Patrick, is there, the name. is there a way you can show them on your screen if you kind of hit the back button? Yes, yes. So looking at the screen here, if you go back to this screen, you want to click right here on tap to enter your name or, or tap, uh, tap, I might say tap to change your name, but either way you just, you hit, on, you hit that and then you can enter your name in and then you'll come back to this screen, click on join the competition. I'm going to do show the leaderboard, but you're, you're all going to click on join the competition. And once you do that, that code is 8881. And then you should see a screen that says deploying. Your, your screen should say this on it. I love sharing. that screen. The leaderboard here, which lets us kind of see who wins. All right. All right, are we ready? I think we're, I think we're good. We've got seven in here. All right, so this is an actual competition. Uh -oh. The winner gets a Sports Academy t-shirt and a hat delivered to you from us. Here we go in three, two, one. Uh-oh, a little technical problem here. Come on, go, come on. All right, there, Patrick, you wanna have them back out here while I fix a little? Yep, everyone just hit that little X in the upper left. Take, and it'll take you back to that home screen. While we're waiting, maybe some people can change their names. Yep, yep, go ahead and change your name if you want on that home screen. There is still, it looks like an 8QWTYA out there. Let's go ahead and back out, enter your name here. <clears throat> and then we're gonna hit join the competition here and, and run a new code in just a moment. All righty. Get out of that. Do this. Actually, almost there. Cognition. We are going to compete and we're going on one minute. And the new game code is five, two, three, seven. 
five, five two, seven, two, three, seven. All right, we got Donovan, Pedro, Megan. What was our target number? 12? 12, that's right. All right, let me know when we're there. Looks like we're at 9, 10. Two more. Uh, looks like we lost maybe two. Oh, we got 11. Oh. All right. Got one more, one more. All right. Looks like maybe we're stuck at 11, which is all right. All right. Ready to kick yep. it off? Yep. All right. Here we go. Oh, here we go. We got Pedro at top. It looks like it's a fight between Pedro and Megan. Pedro and Megan. Megan holding first pretty strong. Pedro catching up. Donovan on third place. Feels like the Olympics here. Megan holding on to first place pretty strong. Pedro, oh, Pedro jumped and dropped. We got Donovan holding third pretty strong. It's a fight between Pedro and Megan. Oh, we got Donovan coming in. Winter right behind. Oh, Edmundo moving up the title here. Pedro in second place. Megan holding that first place pretty strong. Pretty strong. Looks like there's a battle between fourth and fifth. Edmundo, Winter. Come on, Winter. Pedro holding third. Donovan second. Five seconds. Oh, four, that's a little battle between three, Winter. Two. Uh oh. One. Megan holding. Megan holding on. Oh, Donovan sneaked oh. in. Whoa. <laughs> Donovan. Oh, wow. Strong, strong competition. Hold. That was like. That's one of those soccer matches where, like, at the last minute you score a goal. Incredible. Congratulations, Donovan. We'll get your information. We'll send you over that T-shirt and that hat. Uh, let's see how well everybody does on the second competition. While I set up things here in the COG Lab, I'll let Patrick kind of walk you guys through what we're going to be doing on the second competition. And then we'll wrap this up ask, or stick around for any questions. Um, so, Patrick. I'll leave it up to you. Yep. So, and Pat, Patrick, I just want to ask you a quick question, if you don't mind. Yep. At, at the beginning, that was a lot of fun, by the way. That I love that we can use a little competition to to help with uh, our cognitive skills. But you had mentioned that repetition uh, is that key element, and it makes us all better. Um, really, no matter what you're doing, right? You know, creating a habit. Uh, will lead to results typically. And so in this situation, when they're playing the game, how long do you see one person that is going through these cognitive functions and tests, um, how long until you actually see some improvement from them? Is it immediately or does it happen over a little bit of time? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the answer is is pretty complicated, right? It's 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 a and it depends, right? So uh, it depends on um, how important, how uh, the, the, the task that you're working on is relevant to kind of your position and your skill set, right? So like, for example, when we do pitch recognition training with baseball players, we see their hitting go up really quickly, like within a week or two of doing that training. Uh, the reason being that if you can, as a batter, recognize that pitch a little bit earlier, it, it gives you a, a really big advantage, right? As we, as we kind of abstract from there, it takes a little bit longer. Um, what we do often with 
uh, these tasks that are what we call general perceptual cognitive training, what we're doing right now, reaction time, uh, hand-eye coordination, there's, um, you know, it, it, it's going to be, an, it depends, right? So some athletes will use these tasks to warm up their brain before competition, not necessarily as a training tool. Some will use it as a training tool. Um, it depends on how relevant the thing you're training is to, to what you're playing. Like, so for example, um, two of the, two of the populations to which these types of tasks are the most important and they tend to score very high, no matter how hard we kind of make them are esports athletes and formula one drivers. Uh, and that when you think about it, that kind of, that kind of makes a lot of sense because the nature of the task that they're doing in the real world is highly reliant on being able to process information really quickly and react to things really quickly. Does that answer the question? Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, what, what, what we'll typically do is, you know, we'll look at any given person. What are their goals? What are they trying to improve? What are they trying to achieve? And we'll kind of custom tailor different cognitive solutions across all of our different technology. Got it. And uh, before, before we get in this next uh, test and game, can you talk about just when we're all clicking that green button, right? Like, yep. what is the process that happens in our brain and how does it send that signal down to us to actually do that reaction, like to touch it. Right, right. So, I mean, what you're doing there is a combination of, of perception, uh, cognition and reaction, right? So there's uh, your, your eyes are detecting uh, that, that the stimuli is turning green. There's a message being sent to your brain that says it's green. Now your brain is then sending a message to your body to push the green button, and execute a motor task. Uh, so, the amount of time that you kind of see pop up on uh, on the screen when you press it, maybe it's something like 0 0.3, 0 0.28. Uh, that's a fraction of a second, right? 0.28 seconds, 0.3 seconds, a third of a second, or you know sometimes much less than a third of a second. That's the speed at which that neural communication is happening, right? So from the perceptual system to the brain to the motor system. Uh, so, so that's that's kind of the thing that we're training to be faster, right? And and the more complicated and difficult and challenging the tasks are, the more processing needs to happen in the brain, right? So this last one we just did, we, we call it simple for a reason. It's pretty simple. You, you hit the button when it's green. Um, but this next task that we're going to do, uh, our, our spatial task, uh, it, it's what I call processing on the other on the other screen. You're going to see that arrow. And the reason this is going to be more more difficult is that your brain needs to process two things in, in, in a fraction of a second instead of one. Instead of just pressing when it lights green, you need to pay attention to the orientation of the arrow and the color that it lights up. And that's, you're gonna feel that be much more difficult. You're gonna feel yourself kind of go towards one button and then go, no, that's not right, and go back over to the other button. And so you're gonna feel that, that what we call information processing uh, task, you, you, you'll notice it as you're doing that. And you'll notice that your reaction time goes much higher. Um, so the more complicated the tasks are that we train, uh, the, the more, the more room there is for improvement on them. And, um, you know, we'll also practice these, um, another thing that we'll do, we don't have this, uh, in this application, but we also add what's called cognitive loads. So we'll train athletes to block out information that's distracting. So while they're doing a task like this, they might hear a voice that's telling them different information than what they're seeing on the screen. And they have to kind of block that out. Or maybe they need to listen to that and they need to ignore what they're seeing on the screen. Uh, so there are some different ways that we uh, implement cognitive loads and train athletes to perform in spite of loads, because that's something that athletes have to do in their day to day is block out all the noise block out all the things that are getting in your head and really focus in on, on the task at hand. Sorry, that's that may be kind of a long answer. 
No, I mean, that's a, that's exactly what I was, what I was looking for because there's so many different things that take place from when you're processing it and when you're actually trying to do it. it the first sport that really comes to mind to me is, is baseball when, you know, a 90 mile an hour pitch is being thrown and just thinking about how actually long it takes from when it rele releases from the player's hand until when it crosses home plate, it's like 0.4 seconds, right? So there's so much stuff that has to happen. And I'm just like relating it back to, to this in, in which uh, it seemed like when, when I was, I was also playing it and when you were going through it, you know, it's like a right around that time, right? 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Yep. And so it's, it's interesting to make that connection there that, you know, it's a hundred mile, hundred mile an hour fastball pretty much. Um, and yep. so, yeah. Yep. That's absolutely right. I mean, we're, we're at the end of the day here, we're, we're training, um, training cognitive speed, right? We're uh, improving that, that neural connection and, and, and the speed at which it operates. Um, and then also um, in, in the SA Rise app that I showed earlier, we're, we're providing really specific uh, kind of training repetitions on the types of tasks that you do out on the field. So kind of two different approaches that we use. All right, I think we're all ready to go for this next one. All right, Jorge, you have a new code? Yeah. All right, sounds like I'm on. So we're going to kick off the second competition. Um, as Patrick mentioned, this one's going to be quite difficult, which, you know, in our experience, it, if you feel like it's complicated, you feel like your brain is kind of like overwhelmed, like it's, it, it can't understand what's going on, that is all by intention. That is why we create protocols and these training tools. So... Patrick, I think if just to introduce the task, would you like to run it on slow for the first 30 seconds? And then sure. on the competition, we'll dial it up just a little bit and we'll put them on, uh, we'll bump up the speed, run the competition, announce some really cool winners, and that should be it, right? Yeah. All right. So, all right. So, so you, you want me to just the, show it here really quickly? What? That? You want me to show it on the screen really quickly? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. So, all right, everyone. So I'll, I'll show you what we're about to do here. It's going to be the spatial task. This arrow is going to light up green and red. When it's red, you want to press the button behind it, right? So you can't really see my finger. But I'm pressing, when it's green, I'm pressing on the left, okay, lower right, uh, to the right, because now it's red, I go behind it, to the right again, behind the red, behind the red on the left, behind the red on the left, behind the red on the right, in front of the green in the upper left, I was kind of late. You can see my response time popping up in that box up there when I'm not too late. So you can kind of see that the response time for this is going to be higher than before. I'm still pushing a button on the screen, right? So where's that added time coming from? Well, it's the, it's the added time that my brain needs to process this task and both components of the information, right? And I need to be a little bit more precise in my motor response going to a specific button. Um, but so that, that gives you a demonstration of the task here that we're about to do. So green, you press the button that the arrow is pointing at. Red, you press the button behind it. An example of some results to try and beat there, a score of uh, 1,110, 78 accuracy and 0.7 reaction time. If you beat that, I'll be pretty impressed. Uh, <laughs> I, do, I do this stuff a lot. <laughs> be, time to beat the cognitive scientist. That's right. <laughs> All right, so um, on my side, I am gonna kick off the competition. I just got told that I may have about 10 young athletes come in here and do some cognitive training as they're doing their soccer camp training. So it may get a little hectic in the COG lab, which is all right, we love it, we love the energy. So the new game code is 3467 Ameridian. All right, we got two in. Three, four, six, seven. 
There's Megan. Megan, I'm I'm cheering for you because of how close you came last time. <laughs> there is Edmundo. Donovan on the board, Pedro on the board, some of these top cognitive competitors. All right, where are we at on users? Looks like we're at a Are we there? I think that's what we ran for the last one. All right. So we'll get a sense maybe um, after after we run this one, we'll get a sense from the comments if we want to do maybe another warm up just as your brain starts kind of processing and understanding like, oh, okay, I see what's going on. I may need another session. So we'll listen to the comments. If we want to do another warm up, we can. Or if there's no comments, then we will jump straight into the competition. So this is the warm up, 30 seconds. Here we go. Let me get my side ready. Everybody's deploying, hit that start button and of course we run into a little bit of an issue so let me fix that so everybody hit or patrick if you can get everybody yep yep to get back so just go ahead and hit that little that little x in the upper left back on this screen and then you're going to hit that join the competition button again i'm going to hit the show leaderboard button but you're going to hit the join the competition button and new code uh, Eight, one, four, four. Eight, one, four, four. Eight, one, four, four. Let me get my stuff ready here. Eight, one, four, four. So many tools, so much tech. <laughs> here we go. I'm ready. All right, we got five, six, seven, eight. There's some of the top competitors. All right, we're at 10. I think we need one more. Winter is saying she's in. I got you, Winter. All right. I think I need that one, waiting for that one. There we go. All right, Patrick, you ready? We're ready. Here we go. All right, so when that arrow's green, you wanna go in front where it's pointing at. When it's red, you wanna go behind the opposite of where it's pointing. And here's the warm up. All right. Edmundo, I see you, Darren, Donovan, all right. Oh, there's the there's the scientist. Looks like Patrick's in. Looks like Patrick's in. Megan. Run through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look, we got the kids coming through. Here we go. It's gonna get it's gonna get crazy in here. All right. How did everybody feel? So let's put some uh, let's put some notes in the comments. Do we want to run that again, or are we ready to compete? What do we think? I'm looking at the comments. I mean, looking at the comments. Looks like everybody's ready to compete. What do you think, Patrick? I think everyone's ready to compete because they mostly beat me. I didn't even place in the top five. And I <laughs> And I know how it works. So they must know how it works at this point too, I think. They got those young brains. Young oh, I got a Mundo asking to do it again. All right. All right. We'll do it. We'll run it one more time. 30 seconds. All right. Same so game code. Sorry, what is that game code? Eight one four four. Eight one four four. All right, I'm going to join myself. Eight, one, four, four. 
Uh, I'm seeing that that code is is uh, closed. So maybe. maybe ah. All right. Good point. Let me get out of here. Dealing with tech. Dealing with kids. Look at that. Explaining the youngsters some cognitive science. Going here. All right. New game code. Four one eight one. Four. One, eight, one. All right, Darren's on, Patrick's on. Four, one, four, four, one eight, one. I want to join myself. Four, one, eight, one. Ooh, I'm deploying. Look at these kids. Get some cog in. All right, we're at four, five, nine. Two more, one more. We're at 10, we got one more. Maybe we lost one. And Jorge, we're going for 30 seconds for one more practice run. Is 30 right? seconds, one more practice round, absolutely. Okay. 30 seconds, one more practice run here. Winter, are you good? The final competition of the day. Winter, did you get back in? Winter, winter, you in? All right. Here we go. So, winter, if you miss this practice round, don't worry about it. Uh, try to get in on the next one. Let me make sure my devices are on. Kicking it off. Here we go. All right. Countdown timer. Just like I said, All right, just, uh, here's the warm up. Ten second warm up. All right, and we're live. Megan, Megan first. Darren Holden second. Patrick, it looks like Patrick came on. Patrick and set winter. We got a newcomer. All right. Winter's in. Donovan holding four. Donovan and Darren fighting it out here, trying to get on the top three leaderboard. Donovan looks like he hit that number three spot. Patrick holding second. Pretty strong. Megan. Yeah, we, impressive. Holding that, yeah. holding that first spot. Yeah. All right. So I think we're I think we're all set for the for the, the one minute. Final final run for the practice right. here. Here we go. So one so last back uh, out. code here, buddy. If you do join the competition one more time. We're going to <clears throat> all right. New game code is six five three. Zero. Six, six five, five three zero. Six five three zero. I'm gonna hit done. I'm joining the competition as well. So much tech. Six five three zero. So many screens. We got people deploying. I got little youngsters. What's up, little buddy? Say hi. Say hi. It's like a, it's like that. Hi. Look at that. Look at this action happening in the cog lab. Pretty amazing. All right. We got nine. I think we're waiting for two more or one more. Well, one or two. Yeah, there's one. All right. So I'm bumping this thing up, bumping the speed up, bumping the duration. Remember, we're going one minute. Same task. This is for the t shirt and the hat. Everybody ready? Here we go. Go ahead and go again. Go ahead and go again. All right. Got the countdown starting. I got my leaderboard up. I got youngsters in the house. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. 
Yeah. 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 Happy feet. He's stamping over there for All right, here we go. On the leaderboard, we got Donovan holding strong. Donovan and Megan trying to get up there. Megan and Donovan. Darren, Donovan. Darren and Donovan fighting it out for first and second. Donovan holding first. Pretty strong. Looks like Megan may be stuck in that second place. Oh, as I speak, she speaks. She moves to first. Looks like there's a fight between Darren and Megan. We're halfway through the competition. Megan, Darren, Megan and Darren fighting it out first and second. Patrick holding fourth. Wow. We got a newcomer on the board, Pedro. Pedro, stay focused, man. Get up there. Get up there in that number three spot. Looks like Megan's holding second. Looks like Darren's holding first. There's nine. All right. Is that the final result? <laughs> Did Darren just cheat and jump in first? <laughs> uh, we got Darren. I will definitely not be taking the the prize. Um, so that will that will go to the next. All right. I'm just, so oh my, I'm too competitive. <laughs> Winter saying it was too fast. I agree, Winter. I agree. Yeah, I agree. With you, Winter. He, he, he cranked the speed up on us there. <laughs> All right. What do we want to do? How do we want to call it? Who's who's our uh, who's well, winning I'm, the prize? I, I'm gonna give it to uh, Pedro. Pedro, the new name in the top five list. Congratulations, buddy. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll get your information. We'll send you that. We'll send you that T-shirt. Um, Patrick, I'm going to close things up on my end because it's about to get a little crazy. These Sounds kids good. are starting to compete. So I'm going to mute myself and I'll let you take it from here. All right. Thanks, Jorge. It was cool. That that was a lot of fun. And thank you both for uh, being able to take us through it all. And I, I wanted to throw up just one quick question before we end this uh, virtual field trip. And it comes from David Andrews, who wants to know, do you ever work virtually with athletes or do teams or teams who are remote and are unable to go to your facility in person? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so the answer is yes, absolutely. Um, we have our COG lab in both of our facilities in Thousand Oaks, California and Frisco, Texas. We love when we have people kind of coming in and competing and the environment that we can create um our developers have done some cool stuff where the lighting in the room will change based on different tasks and things so we we make it really engaging and fun for athletes uh but everything that we do is offered digitally and that, that's one of the great benefits of of the way we're doing it right so we deliver custom training to nfl teams you know in the city they compete right so we um we deliver custom training to esports athletes everything that i listed before <clears throat> it, it is mostly done remotely. Awesome. Well, cool. Uh, any closing thoughts that you want to throw out there uh, before we end this virtual field trip? <clears throat> um, yeah, just the, the, the couple of things I would just mention are, so for that SA Move app, you're going to have these tasks for this week. You can kind of do them as a warm up each day. Um, if you're having trouble with that application, um, if you're having any technical kind of uh, difficulties, you could just you can just send me an email. So what I'll do is I'll put my email up on the screen here. Um, so let's I'll just add it right in here. Now while, while you're doing that, I'll mention that we have some camps that are going on this week. A lot of them obviously are joining this. So one of the days uh, that will be in person, maybe we can uh, have them play or, or do it on one of our virtual days. And, and, and that's really the, the goal there. So um, hopefully we are able to introduce it and now they're really gonna have some fun with it. Yep, absolutely. Um, any any issues getting into the Move application, you can email me at the address that's on the screen highlighted there, patrick at sportsacademy.us. Um, in addition to the SA Move application, if you want to do any training, again, like I said earlier, if you're a football, baseball, 
best pitch softball or volleyball player. We have some sports specific training that is in the in the uh, iOS app store that you can you can download and it's called SA Rise. So just like we have SA Move, we also have SA Rise. So you can go and download both of those. Um, create create your login in, in SA Move. You, you, you use your Science of Sport email to log in, you create a password. Uh, when you download SA Rise, you should be able to log in with that same information. And again, any questions, any, uh, whether it's about getting into the applications or you, you need the name of something again, or if you just have a separate question for me about the science behind all of this stuff or additional questions on um, kind of how to get into this field, um, same thing. Go ahead and email me. I'm, I'm really happy to, uh, to answer those and, and, and hear from you all. Awesome. Well, well, thank you. Uh, and, and Jorge, throw up that, uh, uh, IG account, because if we can get some of these kids to be able to play it and, you know, get a video of it, we would love to be able to, to showcase it. And there you go at, at official sports Academy and, uh, make sure to follow uh, them along there and uh, thank you both again appreciate it Jorge uh, love the tour love that you're in there getting uh, some cognitive work in with some kids and uh, appreciate you being able to show us the facility and uh, same for you Patrick it was really cool to get a, a perspective of you know, your background how you got into it and be able to show us how to play the game so all right good job everybody good job love it that's that's it for today's virtual field trip and thank you all for joining us thanks everybody thanks everyone